Okay, so we uh, discussed uh, one of the most important problems in question answering, specifically question classification. Uh, uh, in brief, now let's look at some of the specific techniques that I use for question classification. Well, first of all, as the name indicates, uh, question classification is just a classification task, the standard machine learning task. So it's possible to use very standard techniques, for instance, SVMs and naive Bayesian techniques. It's also possible to use regular expressions. Uh, for example, if the question is what country, then it's fairly obvious that the answer that we're looking for is a country. Or if the question is who is or who was, then we can classify this expression or this question as a person. Which state, a state, and so on. So query formulation or query modulation is essentially the process by which a natural language question is converted into an information retrieval query. So here's some examples from uh, one of the Michigan papers. Uh, in that case, the question is, what country is the biggest producer of tungsten? So this uh, question is then converted into different queries, uh, depending on the target search engine. Uh, for example, by removing the double quotes, by uh, replacing uh, the names of uh, words. For example, tungsten uh, was replaced by wolfram because it's a synonym for that uh, element. Uh, tungsten was also replaced by atomic number 74. Again, this is all done using a database like WordNet. Uh, then biggest producer can be also replaced by largest producer. A country can be replaced by a region, geographical area, rural area, and so on. And what's very important is that depending on the target search engine, it may be important to uh, use the right connectors. So for example, the word or to indicate a disjunction of query words or perhaps a vertical bar for the same purpose. The use of double quotes to indicate phrases and so on. Now, what about passage retrieval? So some of the features that I use in passage retrieval are uh, proper names that match the query. So for example, if the question is who wrote Tarzan, we are looking for passages that contain the word Tarzan. Uh, we want the words to be near each other. So if we have multiple proper nouns in the question, we want those to appear near each other in the answer as well. We also want editors that match the expected answer type. So if we're looking for a person or an author like who wrote Tarzan, we are looking for sentences that contain persons. If we didn't have a person in the sentence, it's very likely that that is not the correct uh, passage to return. And then in answer retrieval, we use uh, standard name identity recognition uh, systems to identify the matching phrases. For example, label January 1, 1951 as a date, uh, some of the features that can be used in answer retrieval are the distance to the query word. So for example, if uh, the name of the author is listed within one or two words of the name of the book, that's better than if it's listed 10 or 20 words away. In this case, we're also looking at the answer type that has to match the question, the word net similarity. So for example, if uh, we're looking for author and we want to be able to get person instead or writer, and we're also looking at redundancy. So words that appear multiple times in the answer set are more likely to be the correct answer. Let's look at redundancy in a little bit more detail. Uh, it should be fairly obvious that there are many different ways in which uh, one can express a relation using text. So for example, the relation between Madrid, which is a city, the capital of Spain, and the Spain, which is the country, can be expressed in the following ways. A uh, very simple statement such as Madrid is the capital of Spain, but also things like en route to Spain's capital of Madrid, dot, dot, dot. Uh, Madrid, comma, Spain's capital city is situated almost at the geographical epicenter of the country. The capital of Spain is Madrid, again, a different paraphrase of the original. Madrid, Spain's sunny capital. Madrid became Spain's capital. In 1561, it, referring back to Madrid in a previous sentence, was elevated to status as Spain's capital city and so on. So it's very important to be able to recognize that all of those passages are really paraphrases of one another so that we can take advantage of the existing redundancy and boost up Madrid in the candidate answer list. So a few more examples, uh, the same uh, idea. When did French revolutionaries storm the Bastille? Uh, here's some answers. The storming of the Bastille occurred in Paris on the morning of 14th of July, 1789. 
the storming of the Bastille, 14th July 1789. The storming of the Bastille prison on July 14, 1789. So again, slightly different spelling here. Here, there's one that only has the year, French Revolutionary Storm Bastille, 1789, and so on and so forth. And one more example, who killed Mahatma Gandhi? So here's one answer. Gandhi was assassinated, dot, 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 by Nathuram Godse. Uh, Nathuram Godse killed Gandhi. Godse killed Gandhi. Gandhi was assassinated, shot at, dot, 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 by in the same person. So again, this is just to uh, let you appreciate how much paraphrasing and uh, variability in language can be uh, important for tasks like question answering. So uh, some of the systems that we mentioned before are not based on a local corpus of news, uh, but they're rather based on arbitrary web documents, including blogs and encyclopedia entries and so on. So the, there's a very important distinction between the so-called traditional corpus-based systems and the open-ended web-based systems. First of all, the systems on the web have a significantly larger corpus. We know that the web has billions and billions of documents. Uh, it's impossible to do any sort of pre-annotation. So with a local corpus, even if it's, let's say, several hundred gigabytes, it's possible to go through it in advance and identify all the named entities and date expressions and so on. This is not possible on the web because any document is a potential answer uh, to the question, and it's not possible to pre-process all that uh, data in advance. So search engines are not necessarily useful all the time. So for example, they may remove some of the stop words, they may disregard the question types. For example, if the question type is who wrote Hamlet, the word who is also going to be considered as a stop word. It's not going to be translated into a person name uh, as part of the query process. Search engines also are, impose arbitrary restrictions on queries. For example, some can uh, only allow queries of a certain length. So uh, many of the issues that researchers have to deal with are related to reliability, to the timeliness of the documents. You don't want to return an answer that was accurate a year ago but is no longer correct. And also the presence of inaccurate answers which can creep on the web uh, for many different reasons. Uh, so if you uh, work, uh, if you do research on question answering, you have to deal with all those issues.